Hi, I'm Bob McLean. Thanks for checking out my cybersecurity channel. In this segment, I'm going to talk about indicators of compromise and the pyramid of pain. So the pyramid of pain is a concept, a visualization of the level of difficulty various counter various obstacles in that realm would present to the attacker and the indicators of compromise are those those uh, things that we would be able to identify and say haha you know that is that doesn't belong here and we can use this in our strategy in a number of ways and this is where I think the original documentation presents the pyramid of pain from a perhaps a sim tool perspective where there's a lot of matching if this matches that then do this where I think we can do better through looking not just at things going on in the hosts but traffic flow through your network yeah. so as a business owner, what do you care? Well, our high-level strategy needs to continually look at ways we might be able to improve a countermeasure. And well, I'll, I'll give an example. One of the one of the easiest indicators of compromise that an attacker could have is working from a known IP address. Right. So if we have a tool that recognizes the IP address and can block it, you know, blacklisting function, then the attacker just has to change their source IP address to re-engage our environment. And if we're looking at it from that blacklist match perspective, yeah, it's really easy. Now, if we go back to my example with the finance server, if you know your finance server never has to talk to any entity outside your company, you restrict it to only communicating with internal IP addresses. It's kind of a blunt instrument, but the level of pain that it presents to the attacker to work around, I think raises it a couple of levels or just makes the overall pyramid rise in our implementation of it. So in that example, can an attacker overcome that kind of defense where our finance server is restricted to speaking only to internal IP addresses? And the answer is yes. You know, and that is they can send the database to a workstation off that subnet that the finance server is on and to a host that has access to the outside more or less unfettered <clears throat> and the the attacker has to infect another machine and test its ability to communicate test its ability to reach the destination where data will be exfiltrated to and it just it does increase the level past a simple detection. You know, this is a blacklist, a blacklist that address out it goes. Now we still have to maintain those blacklists because some old servers and some old locations, they're still active. But in preparing or you know in when we look at that, see do we have IP based defenses? Yes. We have IP based countermeasures configured in this area and that area. How can we make them more difficult? How can we use them or modify those countermeasures to make it even more difficult for the attacker? Do we see any evidence of this kind of file file movement and copying? Because something like a file transfer or a database uh, transfer to another workstation, you know, we can put rules around that, you know, and just allow it to talk to the backup system and just allow it to talk to its mirror image in another data center. So the pyramid of pain is a well-respected indicate what well, uh, threat hunting tool and it is it keeps everything 
uh, in focus for us. And some of these, you know, improving the lower level indicators of compromise or improving the effectiveness of those kind of measures isn't the same as intercepting and blocking the top level. Those are still going to be the best. And if we have systems that can do that, great, you know. But um, since security is a process, every time we think we're done, we can find something to improve. And the strategy of continuous improvement through thought out changes, it goes a long way to improving your security over time. I'm going to link to the Pyramid of Pain documentation in the description. I hope you found this useful and interesting. Until we speak, drop a comment, say hi, give me a thumbs up on the YouTube. Thanks. Until we speak, take care.